Thursday afternoon chat with your favorite artists with Jay Off. All right, ladies and gentlemen, will you please put your hands together unless you're driving for our, our guest today, Torrin Wells. How are we? What's up, man? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. It's been a year. It's since, been a year. Yes. Since you had to reach your hand wow. into the fish tank of random questions. Yes. I yeah. missed that fish tank, yeah. man. Hope those, those little fish are all right. What were their names? Because they were all named after hurricanes. Irma, Harvey, and uh, Jose. Nice. I don't know where they are. Yeah. We, we had to let Remember them go. the hurricane last time we were here? Yes. There was a major yeah, storm. That, that was fun. Um, it was, uh, let's see, I remember being on the air and I wanted to get a hold of you on Michael Jackson's birthday. Um, but I knew Michael Jackson was an influence growing up. Yeah. Um, so my first question, I wanted to bounce off of that by saying the part of MJ's, you know, because I grew up in the 80s. I had a girl that sat next to me in my first grade class that wore a glove with glitter every day. And mm -hmm. it's like now that I'm saying that, that's so weird that somebody <laughs> would do that. But he owned our culture for a while. Yeah. So maybe part of his on stage or wardrobe wise that to the Torn Wells set or presentation you would love to bring back that you haven't yet? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I think that we are products of our influences and what we're exposed to. And in my house, my dad had a very eclectic taste in music. So it was everything from Michael Jackson to ACDC to Isley Brothers. Mm -hmm. I just watched so much Michael Jackson growing up. We used to videotape every interview that he did, the specials he would do with Oprah and things like that. Uh, I think that that influence actually comes out in my music and it comes out in my expression on stage as far as what people tell me right. from their observations of me. <laughs> so I think that there's just something about that that I do incorporate into the expression and entertainment that I that I do. Yeah, but can you moon? You can you moonwalk? Did I that can ever moonwalk. Show up of course. Oh, it has. It has yeah. It? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the crowd goes crazy. Uh, they seem to enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. On uh, on hills and valleys, perhaps, or more of an upbeat. Yeah, not yeah. so much on hills and <laughs> valleys. Not really the time or place for that. But uh, musically. If you listen to a lot of his live arrangements, my musical director, Chris Strader, really pulls from a lot of MJ-inspired um, music for our live performances. Yeah. Let's go into the song Known. Um, is this the same album as Hills and Valleys? Valleys? On the same record. Okay. Um, I have not asked you about this song since we started playing it, but what's kind of DNA heart behind Known? Yeah. Known is a song that I think God has used in my life as a doorway into some important things that I needed to learn and understand about him, about the gospel, and about myself, about my relationships. And uh, I didn't really realize it at the time. You know, I wrote it with a couple friends of mine around this quote, this Timothy Keller quote that says, Welcome. yeah, he's awesome. The quote says, to be loved but not known is comforting but superficial. To be known and not loved is our greatest fear, but to be fully known and truly loved is what it means to be loved by God. And so now I've done an entire Devo on it that I'm partnering with you version with, and it's basically been my journey from writing that song a year ago to now. And God has really been teaching me things like what to do with loneliness, what to do with rejection, what to do with stages and platforms and gifts and talents because they are easy to use to prop up an image or to portray an image. And I know that for me it's unique because I'm an artist, but all of us are using different platforms to elevate how we want people to view us and see us. And what I've realized through this song, Known, is that Jesus didn't die for my image. He died for who I actually am. And that the gospel is actually the most powerful where I'm most broken. And that doesn't have to be something that I hide. That's how Paul could say, I actually glory in my weakness. Uh, I know that you 
you know you're you're on stage and, and you're, you're singing and 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 people maybe you know their faith is encouraged coming to see tor and wells on stage but you also preach mm -hmm. uh, from time to time is that right i do okay so which of those two would you say uh is tougher for you and maybe which one is more rewarding i would hope that in both situations that i'm not just presenting torn wells to people that would be a very <laughs> unfulfilling experience i hope that in what i do whether preaching or performing singing leading worship is all using whatever gifts i have to turn people's hearts toward the glory of god and both are challenging in different ways the hard part about going out and performing and singing is that it's second nature to me it is easy to sing so it's easy to go out and perform and have my heart and mind somewhere completely different so the the tough part there is pulling in my whole heart my mind being fully present in that moment and bringing people into a space where they get to encounter God in preaching that's not how I feel to be my gift I feel like it's a calling but I didn't necessarily receive the natural tools that it takes to do it without thinking so it takes a lot of preparation it takes a lot of focus and um, so but the reward of that is I'm fully present in that moment depending on Jesus because I know that without him even if I had nice polished sentences they wouldn't do anything to help anybody um, you did a song on Elevation Worship's album has just come out and uh, you did a song with them how did that whole process go to do they do they approach you is it a label thing where hey we'd like to no nah, it's a relationship thing okay. which has been really cool about all of the features that I've been able to do I actually posted recently about all the different features that I've been able to be on this one was just I've been following the ministry of elevation and Stephen Furtick for more than 10 years uh, from their very beginning back when you couldn't even see videos it was only audio podcasts I was listening and my wife and I just a couple years ago decided that we wanted to go to one of their conferences called Inside Elevation just for us as a couple to hang out and be poured into. And so we went and ended up connecting with a couple of the guys there and they reached back out to have me come sing the song I did with Crowder, All My Hope. So I went in and they were somewhat familiar with me I was very familiar with them and I did that song and then they asked me to sing this other song that they had just written called echo just to lead it so I led it and after I led it Chris Brown and Wade Joy they were like you sound amazing on that song it just takes it to a whole other level which I was like yeah right like it's already amazing and uh, so that just turned into a working relationship where I went in several times over the next several months just to celebrate different things with them and to be a part of what God's doing there and then that turned into them asking me to record on the album mm -hmm. so that was a highlight major highlight bucket list moment for Which, me you're not moving to Charlotte anytime soon. I'm not moving to Charlotte <laughs> no <laughs> You, I'm sorry if this this doesn't make any sense to you, but before I did Christian radio, I was on like a top 40 Kiss FM type station mm -hmm. in Seattle. And it was during an era where it felt like every song we were playing featured Ja Rule. He, it was just this <laughs> window of time where he was so hot, but it yeah. wasn't like these were all his songs. Right. J-Lo featuring Ja Rule. Yeah. On and on. And I feel like you're entering that phase right now where <laughs> we play your songs but everybody wants a little torrent thrown in. Yeah, you know yeah. Which is good. Yeah. To be wanted. I'm so grateful for that. Yeah, it's amazing because I had, this was just funny to me. You may or may not air this, but 
It was funny to me. I had a rapper reach out, a couple actually, to put me on one of their songs because they wanted a radio friendly voice someone that could get them on the radio and that is so hilarious to me because two years ago i couldn't get on the radio <laughs> like with the previous band yeah, yeah. Th none of our songs would really be played you know so yeah, i don't know like, what am i doing different from then. Yeah, to me, it just all feels like one continuous moment, right? One sound, one thing. But it is always cool to be able to elevate somebody else's vision. It's cool to have my own songs and my own singles and things like that. And I want to continue to do that. But I love partnering with an artist that really has a vision and really has a great song. Let's go lighthearted here um, from the fishbowl of random questions. Okay. The fishbowl is back, baby. With... With all of the unnecessary remakes that Hollywood is doing, bringing back everything and doing a full-length feature film on things we were watching back in the 80s, you know, TV shows, everything. What is the one movie you and I saw in the 80s that hasn't had a quality remake, but you were into it, that film, and you'd love to give it a $200 million budget? Hmm, that is a tough question. <laughs> I mean, my first thought was Back to the Future. It would be really dope to do a sequel to Back to the Future that would be present day yeah. set up, moving ahead yeah. another couple hundred years or right. whatever it or In was. that case, they went to the 50s. They went back Well, they went years. back and then they went to the 2000s, right. you so know? So we'd be going back to, in this scenario, we'd be going back to... Like, if you went back to the 80s now... Yeah. And, like, use the Back to the Future context... Yeah. But then also reached forward... Where Marty McFly is having a hard time figuring out how to work a cassette. This right, time yes. Who, yeah. who plays Marty McFly? Like a Zac Efron? Yeah, that'd be good. Who's of that age? His you may be the producer <laughs> for that movie. I promise I haven't given this much thought. Let's go second uh, fishbowl question here. What is your favorite film all time? But don't tell us what it is. Give us the 30 second and I'm going to see. We'll see you if can we can guess nail it? it. Yeah, but you can't use the name of it. Or okay. Actors. Okay. There is an aviator that is a great pilot that needs to be hired to find another planet that can be used for civilization because all of the produce on earth has been depleted there's no more resources and he enters into a major time warp that causes him to miss his children being raised and major life events and I'm then in trouble when he locks back into time his daughter is older than him i feel like i've seen this okay i'm gonna need one actor jessica chastain i'm gonna need two actors <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to give you one that you couldn't guess was she an extra in this that's not um, fair um <laughs> Uh, Matthew McConaughey. Oh, man. Come on, bro. I know. <laughs> this is not You're good. confused, too. Guys, this movie is amazing. And it's a big hit, I'm sure, too, Huge. right? Huge. It's, it's killing me because I know it and I know I've seen it. Interstellar. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That there's been so many Martian. Fantastic. There's been so many movies about going to Mars lately. That's true. There was like The Martian. Yeah. Home. Or, yeah. yeah. There was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, gravity. gravity. Yeah. That's the excuse I'm going with for not being able nice to try. nail her stuff. <laughs> All right. Uh, wrapping up with Torn Wells. Uh, next year, new music, perhaps. 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 All right. It's not writing time yet for you. It is writing time. Okay. Yeah, we are writing. Okay. So you got the ingredients on the table. You're starting to... I'm still shopping. 
Okay. From walking down the aisles, <laughs> eyeballing ingredients, seeing what we're going to put in the cart. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great analogy. Uh, appreciate your heart. Always appreciate the time, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. The Thursday Afternoon Chat. Your favorite artists with J.R.